Hey everyone, this is Mark, and I just posted up a blog about um, how I was able to maintain motivation to lose the weight I lost, mainly due to the joint pain. But I thought I'd do a quick video kind of summary of that, just so to share it with people on the YouTube channel, all two of you who watch this. <laughs> and uh, um, if you, but if you want to know more, just click on the link in the description below to go to the blog post, which is at marcusmoran.com. So. Um, I talked before about the, the three health factors that really contribute uh, to my condition. And those are uh, lack of sleep, uh, increases of stress, and poor nutrition. Those three things together are what always cause the joint inflammation to happen. They always cause me to be sick, to gain weight. All the bad stuff that happens in my body is because of those three things. And so in May, when I got this new bout of inflammation in my leg, I made a decision a very significant decision that I was going to make this the last time I ever experienced this joint pain. And to be honest, if the pain hadn't been as bad as it was and lasted as long as it has, I probably would have given up at some point. I'm being honest here. Um, and so the first thing I decided to attack out of those three things, stress and, and sleep and poor nutrition, is my nutrition. That's what I was going to work on because I knew more than anything else, and even exercise is, is beneficial too, but more than anything else, those are the things that would really have a big impact. So I focus on the nutrition and um, I change it in several significant ways. And this is what I did. Um, the first thing I did is I eliminated all processed food. And I mean all processed food, period. I didn't have anything that touched a machine. Um, I haven't been to a fad food, fad fast food restaurant or convenience store in three months. Um, with the exception, I realized after I wrote the blog post, with the exception that um, I have had the salads at Wendy's. They have a nice Greek salad there and I have had that. Uh, but that's the only fast food I've had and it's a salad so it doesn't feel like it's like I'm actually cheating. Probably not the best salad, but when you're in a rush and you've got to get something to eat and you want something healthy, it's not a bad option. I never get dressing on my salads. I just eat the vegetables, so um, that's not too bad. Uh, the second thing I did is I eliminated all grains and starches. No wheat, barley, beans, rice, potatoes, yams, any of that stuff. Um, basically, anything that would slightly spike insulin, I got rid of for my diet. Um, plus, gluten in general is kind of messes up your, your digestive tract. So I just got rid of all breads, all pastas, all grains, cereals, you name it. I didn't touch it. So that was the second thing I did. Uh, and that was a big one, I think. Um, the third one is probably uh, focusing, I know the third one was focusing on re removing foods that cause inflammation. So eggplant, certain peppers, um, there's a lot of foods that can cause you to get inflamed in, in not just your joints but in general. So anything that would bloat you or cause you to, to get that way, I, I took that out of my diet as well. And of course I eliminated the fourth thing is all the sugars including high fruit, uh, high sugar fruits. So I haven't had sugar in a long time. The only thing I'll, I'll have occasionally is, is um, stevia leaf extract, which is uh, doesn't spike insulin. And it's actually seven times sweeter than sugar. So like a drop or two in a drink will, will make it sweet. It's, it's pretty amazing. Um, or if you get like raw cocoa powder and you're making something out of that uh, with some coconut oil or something, you put a couple of drops of stevia, it makes it sweet chocolate. It's kind of cool. Uh, so. Got rid of all the sugars. The only fruits I eat are like organic berries, blueberries, strawberries, blackberries, like an organic berry mix kind of thing. And I'll have that with some like kefir or some uh, like pasture raised uh, yogurt, like super healthy, like no nothing added to the yogurt to, for the probiotics mainly. And the next thing, the fifth thing is that I only drink water or something related to water. So like tea, I would have green tea sometimes. I cut out coffee for almost the whole three months. Recently I had one or two cups, uh, but for the most part I haven't had coffee in, in about three months. Um, the other thing I'll do sometimes is have water with lemon in it or water with uh, apple cider vinegar, um, which is really good uh, for reducing inflammation. Or I have this wheat grass, wheat grass juice powder that I will also put in, in a shaker and have that sometimes in the morning. Um, so things like that I'll drink, but I haven't had juice, I haven't had energy drinks, any of that kind of stuff in a long time. Um, and I also stay away from large amounts of protein. If you eat more than six ounces of protein in a sitting, it actually spikes your insulin and causes you to gain fat. 
So I focus on having around three to six ounces of protein per meal, which is more than enough, really. I, keep in mind, I'm not exercising during the last three months. I haven't moved. I've been bedridden for a decent part of that. So it's if you think about it, I, this is completely nutrition-based weight loss. I, I wasn't able to move at all. In fact, some of my muscles have atrophied a little bit because I haven't been able to exercise. Um, uh, which might have contributed to some of the weight loss, I guess. But um, I, I don't I don't feel any weaker. I actually feel stronger. So, uh, but definitely I, I don't eat a lot of proteins. Um, I also didn't rely on a lot of fats. Um, a lot of, a lot of people who do a ketogenic diet uh, do a lot of fats. It's like tons of proteins, tons of fats, and uh, just a little bit of vegetables. But I do the other way. I do lots of vegetables, like tons of vegetables. And, and the reason I do that, I'm going to talk about it in a different video, but the reason I do that is because the vegetables, especially kale, spinach, celery, that kind of stuff, that's what's going to cleanse your liver out from all the fat you're getting rid of. So as you're detoxifying your body, getting rid of all the bad stuff, your liver and your kidneys need help getting rid of all that stuff. And that's where high levels of potassium, you need a lot of potassium from those green leafy vegetables to help process that those toxins. So did a lot of that. And that leads into the seventh thing I did, which is really focus on the nutritional quality of food. I, like I said, had a lot of green leafy vegetables, spinach, kale, arugula. I had a lot of celery, sprouted, uh, like sprouts, alfalfa, uh, good sources of protein, nothing uh, GMO'd or antibiotic filled or hormone, you know, hormone free foods, grass fed, pasture raised, all that kind of stuff as much as possible. Now there's always exceptions. Once in a while, you'll have to eat something like a piece of chicken that you don't know where it came from. But I think as long as the majority of what you're eating is, is the good kind, once in a while a piece of uh, beef that you don't isn't grass-fed won't hurt you necessarily, as long as most of what you're eating is good quality. So in the past, whenever I tried to do stuff like this, and I've tried this before, is it would last a couple days or a week at the most, um, and then I would give up. And the reason I would give up is because I would cheat. I would, I would you know, get interested in something delicious because <laughs> food that's bad for you is really delicious. I mean, I like processed food. It's I think it's fantastic, to be honest. Bad for you, but fantastic tasting and fun to eat. Um, hot dogs, like, man, I miss Costco hot dogs a lot. But I know that that is just going to do me in for this knee. But see, this is the thing. When you cheat on your nutrition, you can't lose with the weight as as well as you want, as you need to it, it won't come off as quickly um, and you won't lose weight if you cheat so the only reason I was able to go this long without cheating at all uh, was because I was in constant pain the whole time for the most part so uh, when you're laid up in bed and you're just having like this extreme pain in your joints it's really motivating to do the right thing uh, and I think that's the main contributing factor now I'm not saying that uh, people who don't have willpower because I know a lot of you do and I'm not saying that I have zero willpower because I have enough to make sure that I don't want to feel pain um, but the pain was a really good motivator for me and I guess the thing is just find the pain that motivates you so maybe it's not knee and joint pain but maybe it's emotional pain or maybe it's you know, someone ridiculed you for being fat or maybe it's the pain of not being able to see your children grow up or whatever it is there's a pain there that's associated with being overweight so tap into that and remind yourself of it constantly so that you have the motivation to follow through. That's what I think um, is what helped me the most. Um, and I didn't want drugs to be the answer, medication. I, I took it when it was necessary, but I don't like taking it. So I only use it as a stopgap measure to, uh, at certain points um, when it was really bad, like I couldn't sleep kind of bad, I would go to the ER and get some uh, medication to help with the, the joint. but. I tried to do that as little as possible, only when it was absolutely necessary. And for the most part, I focused on natural healing. Um, but this isn't about that. I'm going to talk about all that stuff in a later uh, video. This is more about the weight loss. So the, the key thing here, the long story short, is that I focused on a hormonal, my body's hormonal response to food, um, both what I ate and when I ate it. So. Um, I did that in order to, to promote a decrease in inflammation, to improve the body's cell function, the cells functions of my body, and it turns out uh, it increases fat loss too when you do things this way. So I minimized minimized insulin and glucagon production, and instead I uh, insulin is what causes fat 
to be accumulated in your body and causes inflammation in your arteries, your joints, everywhere. And um, I focused on increasing gro growth hormone production and other hormones that burn fat and help your body be healthy and improve cell function. And that required changing from uh, from glycolysis, glycolysis. I really don't know how it's pronounced. To ketosis, which is um, changing from a sugar as your primary fuel source in your cells to fat as the primary fuel source to your cells. This takes a little bit of uh, adjustment. If you're familiar with ketosis or uh, the ketogenic diet that a lot of people do, which, like I said, I didn't do that one. I did my own version, which is more vegetable focused. Um, it's basically there's there's an adaptation period where your body's chemistry is changing to a different fuel source that takes anywhere from a week to a couple weeks uh, it took me about 10 days uh, because i went all in um, and after those 10 days i sw i felt amazing my energy levels have i haven't felt groggy and tired except when i'm actually sleepy i need to sleep and um, my i don't get those mid-afternoon whatever so that's why i haven't needed coffee either you don't need coffee if you're not sleepy at two o'clock in the afternoon uh, which is great so no more brain fog none of that kind of stuff um, and here's the thing, it's, it's not like I haven't known my whole life how you should eat. I mean, it's, it's not, not complicated. You eat more vegetables and plants and you eat less garbage, right? Um, but I would always put it off. I would always cheat. And I think that's the reason that most people, most people know what they should do. They know that they should eat more vegetables, eat less crap. But a lot of them don't do it. They just cheat. They're like, oh man, rice. I can't live without rice. Yeah, you can live without rice. I've done it. You can totally do it. You just don't want to do it. And that's a big distinction there, right? Determining what you want to give up versus what you need to give up. And I needed to give this stuff up. It wasn't a want anymore. So when you can decide, make that decision that it's no longer the sugar or the breads or the rice or the pasta or whatever it is that's causing you to keep the weight on, if you can decide that those are no longer things that you want to eat but and you have to you just have to not eat those things that's when you'll make that shift because um, you know a piece of bread here a piece of rice there it, it it changes things it affects your body's chemical makeup and you're gonna think like oh uh, take a spoon of rice won't hurt me who eats rice with a spoon a chopstick full of rice won't hurt me or a bowl of rice or you know a little piece of pita bread's not gonna hurt anything when I have it with my salad but it has an effect and Telling yourself otherwise is lying to yourself. And you know you're lying to yourself. And I knew I was lying to myself all this time. So it's all about really being honest with the reality of nutrition and who you are. Right? They say it takes about 25 to 70 days to form a habit. And I've been doing this for 90 days as of today. And um, I still get the occasional impulse to eat bad stuff. And I imagine it's going to be around for a while because that stuff's delicious. Um, but I'm able to temper it because I've been building up a resistance to those urges. And... I'm building up habits of when and how to eat that have been helping a lot. Um, so, as far as my results go, um, the numbers are, I started off around 250 pounds back in May, around May 24th or 5th is when I started this. And since then, I've lost 57 pounds, I'm at 193 now. And I haven't been 193 since 1997, that's 20 years, which is amazing. Um, and I have the numbers on my blog, they tell you exactly how much weight I lost for different periods of time. I, I measured myself on May 25th, then I weighed myself on June 10th, July 5th, July 16th, and August 5th. August 5th is when I got down to 193. So that's actually 72 days where I lost 57 pounds. And I've been staying steady at 193 since then. And actually, I think that's a good thing because I think it's necessary for your body to normalize things and stay on a plateau for a while to get used to and create this sort of equilibrium uh, body chemistry that it needs to achieve and then as long as I maintain healthy eating habits I'll get down eventually to what my body considers its optimal weight 193 is not my optimal weight I'm still overweight but it's getting better and I'm okay with staying here for a little while because it, it feels good and I'm happy with it um, so the interesting thing about all this is that weight loss has never been my goal my my goal was was to um, be healthy it just turns out the weight loss is the result of being healthy. So as I ate healthier, my weight came off. But that was never my goal. I, I, I knew that weight loss would happen, but I never did this with the intention of losing weight. Uh, it's just a happy accident, I guess. So I have a bunch of pictures and other stats on my blog post. So be sure to check that out. Click below for that. Um, those things. Uh, here's a quick 
uh, before and after photo just so you can check that out uh, because I think it's kind of cool to see just how dramatically at least to me it looks pretty dramatic between before and now um, I mean the the neck alone is, is ginormous <laughs> before I mean I oh man it's hard to breathe um, I also talk in my blog about how I would do this how I would lose weight if I didn't have that pain motivation uh, you know or just how I would do it in a gradual way if I didn't have to do it um, and I talk more in detail, but basically I would, first thing I would do is take out the sweets, because at least for me, I don't have a sweet tooth. That would be the easiest thing to remove first. Then I would take out processed foods and I would replace those with good things. So instead of a hot dog, have a good quality like chicken sausage, or instead of a hamburger from McDonald's, go get some nice grass-fed ground beef. You know, just replace the, the convenient food with good quality food. The third is I would take out the wheat. Uh, gluten really kills your digestion. I would include more greens as the fourth thing, seven to nine cups of greens a day. Um, and I would stop snacking. The more you snack, the worse it is. If, when you snack, you are destroying your ability to lose weight. Trust me. So reduce your meals to three a day maximum. Breakfast, lunch, dinner is fine, but don't snack in between meals, period. Maybe that should be number one, because seriously, okay, sugar is big though. But those are the five things I would do. You do those five things, you'll start to lose weight, guaranteed. Um, but anyway, that's enough for today. It's taken a long time here. I hope that was helpful. Uh, again, check out the blog for more information. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, if you have any questions, just post them below. And until next time, take it easy. Have a great day.